Well, I'm pleased to confirm two significant announcements for the football club today. Firstly, Programmed has signed on as co-major sponsor of the football club for a further four years. Programmed an ASX listed company, a proud West Australian company competing on the national stage with a strong people focus. We're delighted with their four year extension, which takes it to a minimum 10 year co-major partnership of the football club. I'd now like to introduce Chris Sutherland, the MD of Programmed, to say a few words. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Program as a leading uh, provider of staffing, maintenance and facility management services, are very pleased to renew our sponsorship with Fremantle here today for the next four years. Uh, the partnership with Fremantle enables us to deepen our engagement with all of our 10,000 employees and helps us build relationships with thousands of customers across Australia. The program invests with Fremantle because their passion, blue collar work ethic and team focus aligns with our values and with the teams of, of our blue collar field employees all across the nation. And finally, the uh, program is really excited that uh, Nat Fife has also extended his contract in line with us, um, as he is certainly very, very popular amongst all our staff and our customers. So, well done, Nathan, too. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Great segue to the second announcement. So, also pleased to confirm, as well as the program extension, that Nat Fife has extended his contract with the playing club for a further three years. And Nat's going to take a few questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Nat, is there any doubt at any point? Uh, not really, no. I, I definitely took the time with my family and management to weigh up um, all the options um, and Fremantle was the best fit for me. I've loved playing here. Um, the culture that's building here at this club is really strong, a really player driven culture with high accountability and high standards and it's been great to be a part of and um, I'm keen to be a part of that going forward. Is there a point where you made a final decision where you said, yeah, I want to stay, let's make it happen? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Um, with my last contract, I left it pretty late as well, just so I had all the information at hand. Um, I did the same with this one, and, um, and full credit to the to the Fremantle Footy Club, Steve Rossic, Brad Lloyd, and also Jason Dover and Stride Sport, my management, who sat down in a really professional way and just got it done really quickly. So, full credit to them. Pretty happy with the length and all that sort of, you know, did you? Longer length contracts or bigger money contracts over recent to stay with Fremantle? Oh, not really. There was no really um, formal contracts put to me as such. Um, anything that was put forward was put to my manager. Um, but three years was the best fit. My last contract extension was three years as well. Um, any longer than that, there's the option and possibility to potentially become complacent. Um, and obviously, there's. Um, uh, yeah, three years was just the best fit, um, and my family and my management were really happy with that as well. Yeah, was, was, was the term, um, I mean, was that coming from your side? Was there more on uh, open terms of length? Uh, it was from both sides, really. I think it suits both sides. Obviously, commercially with the free agency window, uh, it brings me out as an eight-year player, um, and Fremantle will have, obviously, the first option to retain me as a, as a, as a free agent. So. Um, but yeah, three years, perfect fit. It was my last extension was three years and I was really comfortable with that period of time. What's it like to go through as a player with all the speculation, the media, the crowd, people asking you and still playing football and kind of focused on that with all this going on around you? Yeah, personally it hasn't been that big a distraction. Uh, footy clubs are great at keeping players insulated and really focused on the job at hand, which is playing footy week in, week out. Um, but as I said, my management were fantastic. Anything. Um, that was put forward, they handled and just came to me with any information I needed to know and um, when it came to a negotiation it was really swift, uh, went in, got the job done and, and I'm yeah, really pleased and happy to move forward and play some good footy for free over the next couple of years. Now many people talk about you as a future captain of the club, is that something you aspire to? I wouldn't say aspire to but I think the beauty of our leadership system is it's player um, voted for um, so ultimately if the playing group want me to lead them um, then I'll have no problems in doing that. We're now getting uh, David Mundy's ear trying to convince him to do the same thing as you. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, I, I love playing with Dave Mundy, um, and I'm really hopeful that he'll stay here at Freo. But he's got a lot of things to weigh up with his family and and his management as well. But I'm sure he'll make the right decision. Nathan, is Fremantle at the stage now where players may have to accept to take less um, to stay in a team that's continuing <coughs> for premiership? Well, fortunately, that's not my job to worry about. Um, our list management team have the job of, um, of making sure that the club's financially set up for, the, for years to come, and um, I'm sure that they'll do a good job of that. Is being in a team that is in contention a, a, a big issue for you when you weigh up your, your contract options? 
Absolutely, yeah. Playing um, playing team footy and succeeding as a team is ultimately what we're in the game for. So, uh, as I said, Freo are building a strong culture which will set this club up for success or the best opportunity for success um, for not only my time but going forward from that and, um, and I'm really keen to be a part of that. You mentioned the contract talks or the <coughs> having this hovering over you didn't affect, affect the way you play. What about this probably will make you the team's highest paid player next year? You accept that responsibility or the hype or the speculation that comes with you? Yeah, I think it's been a real gradual build from when I first debuted through to now. It hasn't all of a sudden been lumped on top of me. So um, as I've progressed and, and more responsibilities come onto me, I've handled that at the stage. And um, yeah, I, I'm really keen to take any responsibility that comes my way and continue leading the team um, and playing good footy as I feel I've done so far. That is premiership the ultimate goal in the next three years? Ultimately, yeah, that's what all clubs play for. How do you feel with what do you feel the chances of this group are now playing the grand final last year? I think we're really setting ourselves up um, to give ourselves the best pop possible opportunities to, to succeed. Um, we've had a reasonable year so far. We've had players come in and out and dealt with different challenges along the way. Um, but in the business of footy, you can't look much further than, than the game ahead. And obviously the derby this weekend is going to be a huge game, our home derby. We love playing in front of our home fans and, and obviously Dave Mundy's 200, which is a really big occasion for the club. Is there a special bond between the three main midfielders? You're both big, tall guys and sort of setting a new standard in the competition as far as the size and strength of midfielders between you and Vicky Barlow, who made a guest appearance a short time ago. <laughs> Go easy on him. And, uh, and Dave Mundy? Yeah, internally we're, we call ourselves the big three. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, we really enjoy playing footy um, together as a group and, and with the outside guys as well, Stephen Hill, Daniel Pearce and obviously the Ruckman. So, um, a strong midfield contingency that's been building over a couple of years and um, a, great, a great group to work with. Can you give us some thoughts on Dave, on his 200th and, and what he's been as a player in your observations? Yeah, I think he's, he's probably unheralded a little bit in his actual ability as a footballer. Um, he's sort of quite a humble, quiet sort of guy, so he doesn't get the media attention as much as some of the other guys. But, um, such a great player to work with, a strong leader on field, really smart, silky ball user. Um, and when the chips are down, as a player you really look to to, to lead and lift. Um, and I've learned a lot off him and will continue to learn a lot off him and hopefully can play with him um, going forward. And the progression in your own game, you mentioned I think during the pre-season that you wanted to take your skills to a new level. Have you found there's been an improvement in the first half of the year and what other aspects of your game are you trying to improve? Yeah, so I'm continually trying to work on all aspects, uh, particularly my kicking and my skills, um, and that versatility about to play forward, um, take a few catches, kick a couple of goals, and also roll back as a defender. Um, heaven forbid if they ever need me back there. So um, yeah, it's a continual build, and, and I'll continue to work on my game as we go. You're going at about a goal a game this year. Is that what you would have expected and set yourself to do? Uh, no real expectation. Um, but mid goals, midfield goals is a stat that we keep track of. Uh, we like to have a big spread of goal kickers so there's no heavy reliance on our forwards. So um, reasonably pleased with how that's tracking. Stephen, um, how are you placed with David Mundy at the moment? Um, well, I'd say well placed. Um, we make a, a habit, a concerted habit of not talking about contracts in progress. We, we didn't with Nathan and we don't with any other player. So I won't make an exception with David. Um, but we're really well placed as a football club to retain players that uh, that we seek to retain and also attract players to our footy club, so very comfortable. Are you, com are you comfortable salary cap wise? Like part of the risk management model has been to take one free swing every year, either through the pre-season draft with an out-of-contract player or uh, a free agency one. Are you going to be in a position to do that again? Um, that's something we'll weigh up closer to the end of the year. Uh, we're in the business of making sure we reward all of our players um, a commensurate value to their worth and we believe we've done that in the case with Nathan um, and we'll do that with every single player on our list and that may position us for an opportunity at the end of the year, it may not, um, but we're working through those sorts of things as we speak. Thank you. Yeah, well, thankfully Scott Selwood's not playing, so I think we always go head to head and he usually stitches me up, so I'm not sure really. We'll do our um, opposition analysis today and tomorrow. Um, we've already had a little bit of a look at them and we know 
how able they are in their ruck stocks and also as their speed on the outside, so not sure who will come to it. And uh, I suppose in terms of how both teams are placed at the moment, um, you must obviously going in a bit of confidence. Uh, look, our form's been pretty good, but they won last week as well, and, and derbies really bring the best out in both sides. Um, so we're expecting a really fierce battle, and um, it's great that it's our home derby. We're expecting a full house of purple, and, and we love playing in front of our home fans. Um, so it should really be on from, from the first bounce.